Good morning. Today, our goal is to explore orbital motion. And the question we'll be answering is this. How is it possible for an object to stay in orbit around the Earth? So to begin with, we have to discuss gravity. When the object is sitting on the Earth, when its altitude is exactly zero kilometers, the acceleration due to gravity is 9.8 meters per second per second. What this means is that for an object that is falling, every one second its speed will increase by 9.8. This gravitational attraction gets weaker as you go further away from the Earth. So for example, at the surface of the Earth it's 9.8, but 100 kilometers above the Earth it's only 9.5. At 400 kilometers above the Earth, where the International Space Station orbits, it's 8.7. Notice the acceleration due to gravity is still significant. It's still 8.7. So the first myth I'd like to dispel is that there is no gravity in space. No there is a significant amount of gravity in space. Even at a thousand kilometers above the Earth, it's still 7.3. And at 1,500 kilometers above the Earth, it's 6.4. And even at 5,000 kilometers above the Earth, it's still 3.1. So what would happen if I removed my hand, if I let this shuttle go? Would it just float in space at 5,000 kilometers above the Earth? Let's see. No. As you can see, even when an object is 5,000 kilometers above the Earth, it still falls. It's just like dropping a pencil on the Earth, except you're 5,000 kilometers away and you're dropping that pencil. So, objects don't simply float in space. So now the question is, how do they stay in orbit? Let's start off with our object at a thousand kilometers above the Earth. To maintain an orbit, you need some speed. So, we're initially going to give it a push. My hand over here is going to give it a push at a thousand meters per second which is 3,600 kilometers an hour. Let's see what happens. I don't know. Nothing happens. It smashes into the Earth. That speed is not fast enough. Let's try 3,000 meters per second. No, it still smashes into the Earth. We've got to go faster. Let's try 6,000 meters per second. No. Faster. Faster, I say. Faster. Let's try 7,000 meters per second. We're close. As you can see, we're really close. If we go just a little faster, and in fact, the number has been written right over here. 7,351.7 meters per second. It's been there all along. And sure enough, the object at that specific speed orbits the Earth. So now the question is, what would happen if we gave it a speed that was slightly greater? Let's try 8,000 meters per second. Notice now the orbit is no longer circular. The orbit is an oval, or an ellipse. Most objects orbit with an ellipse. Let's go back to the circular orbit for a moment. Now in a moment, we are going to create a cosmic catastrophe with this button here. When the cosmic catastrophe is created, the Earth will disappear. 
let's see if the object still stays in orbit when the Earth disappears. All right, I'm going to create the cosmic catastrophe right now. As you can see, the object no longer stays in orbit. It travels in a straight line. Newton's first law says that an object moving in a straight line will continue moving in a straight line unless there's a force. So you see, there are two factors required for an orbit. One, the object needs speed. If it doesn't have any speed, if it doesn't have any speed, it smashes right into the Earth. When we give it a speed of zero, no good. It can't stay in orbit. But two, not only does the object need speed, but the object also needs gravity. It needs some sort of attraction. When we remove that attraction, it travels in a straight line. So keep that in mind. There are two things required for an orbit. One, the object needs speed, but two, the object needs gravity. Now what's really interesting with this simulation is that I could change the mass of the Earth. Let's change the mass of the Earth and see what happens to the gravitational attraction. So right now, at 1,000 kilometers above the Earth, it's 7.3 meters per second squared. We're going to increase the mass of the Earth. Notice, as I increase the mass of the Earth, we're getting new continents appearing. So we've effectively doubled the mass of the Earth. There's some new continents here. And notice what's happened to the acceleration due to gravity. It's increased. I'll show you that again. With the regular mass of the Earth at 7.3, when you double the mass of the Earth, well, the acceleration due to gravity has also doubled to 14.6. Now let's see what happens if we don't change the speed. Ah, with more gravity, we need a higher speed. That speed just doesn't cut it when we've doubled the acceleration due to gravity. And so let's see the speed we have to dial in. Well, according to the program, it's 10,396.8. Let's try that. And notice now, with more gravity, with greater gravitational attraction, we need a higher speed to orbit the planet. So, the take-home message today, you need speed to orbit, and you also need gravity. Without gravity, the object will travel in a straight line. Finally, let's go back to our base case. We're going to launch it. And now the question is, is this speed unique to that altitude? Well, as you just saw, that speed depended on the mass of the Earth. But what else does it depend upon? Well, I'm going to reduce the altitude to 400 kilometers. Let's see if we leave that same speed in. Notice once again, that speed is not fast enough. We need a higher speed. Why? Because when we reduce the altitude, when the object gets closer to the Earth, it experiences greater gravitational attraction. So let's see the speed we need. According to the simulation, it's 7,670.1. Notice also the new acceleration due to gravity. At 1,000 kilometers, it was 7.3. Now, because we've reduced the altitude, we've gone closer to the Earth, it's 8.7. And sure enough, at the higher speed, the object is now able to orbit the Earth. So that initial launch speed required is dependent on the altitude of the Earth and also the mass of the Earth because altitude and mass influence the gravitational attraction. Now obviously there aren't people's hands in Earth giving objects pushes 
The objects that give those pushes are rockets. So the rocket provides that speed for the object to maintain its orbit. I hope you enjoyed today's discussion. Have a great day. Bye-bye.